be the pastor here. Um, it's going to, uh, we have a recording of him that we're going to use for Sunday school this morning. I had originally for its anniversary Sunday, 52 years since we got started, I had originally intended to have Brother Drake in the Sunday school and Brother Chris uh, in the 11 o'clock, but as you know, Brother Chris's wife recently passed away, and he texted me about a week before she passed away, and apologize for late notice, but he said, there's no way I can get something together for you. So uh, I'm afraid you're stuck with me in the 11 o'clock, but we do have Brother Drake uh, that Lord willing, we're going to watch in a, in a few minutes. I wanted to go ahead and get some prayer requests. I have had uh, one uh, lady who told me she was coming today has already texted to say that she couldn't, couldn't come. And uh, so her name is Sherry Presley. We want to pray for her. I'm not exactly sure uh, what the situation is. Uh, and Connie Brouch is another lady. She said she was down in her back and could not come this morning. Um, actually, Denise is pretty much down in her back. She has an appointment at the chiropractor on Monday. So I would appreciate your prayers for Denise. We are praying for a good turnout this morning. And uh, the Lord's will be done there. Any other prayer requests? Yes, ma'am. My oldest is in Poland. Maybe Your oldest is in Poland? Yeah, maybe just pray that he comes back safe now. Yeah, so tell me his tomorrow. name again. J-A-L-E-N. 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 L-E-N. Jalen, I thought you said, never mind. Sorry, sorry. No, it's okay. Jalen. Is in Poland. Wow. Is he on the dangerous side of Poland? I, no, I don't think so. Okay, good. I hope not. <laughs> He's close to the middle. So. Close to the middle. Okay. All right. Well, there are there is some cold world craziness go cold war craziness going on over that way. So we do want to pray for Jalen's safe return. Amen. Uh, anyone else? Pastor, this is greetings. Greetings from Stuttgart, from Pastor Paul Brock, Victory Baptist Church. Well, that's exciting. I need to get his number. I'll get that from you after church. I'm sure you have it. Yesterday, Denise and I were out. You know, I told you that we would get something. For, we brought the most visitors today. So we have something for the ladies and something for the fellas. And... Uh, we had on matching Psalm 23 shirts. The lady said amen when she passed me, and then she passed Denise, she said amen again. And anyway, I heard her say something at the checkout that uh, she was from Onspot, and she's actually just recently started going to the church that the Coleman's came from, and uh, that was pretty cool. But uh, anybody else? Any other prayer requests? We want to continue to pray for those people amongst us that have stressful jobs. Remember those that are deployed. Remember Ukraine. And pray that somebody does something sensible to help those dear people. All right. If there is no other prayer requests, we shall open in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for those that have gathered here for Sunday school this morning. I pray that you would just work in our midst. I pray that uh, Brother Drake's message would be an encouragement to us all, Lord. We do pray for Jalen as he's away in Poland, Lord. I pray that you would keep him safe. We pray for the many visitors that have been invited today. And we pray that uh, your name would be glorified by their attendance here. We do pray for uh, Miss Connie and Miss Denise and Miss Sherry various issues there, two of them with back issues, we pray that you would work that out. We do thank you for how you're working in the Wilson family and beginning to uh, uh, heal McKaylee, and we pray that you would continue to work there. We do pray for uh, all of our military that are deployed, Lord, in various places, and I understand some of those deployments have been extended indefinitely. Uh, I do understand um, that the families are having a difficult time. I will kind of, uh, just our heart goes out to the families and, and craziness that's going on, Lord. And I, I lift up uh, 
Thomas today as he is over in all the casualties, and I know a, a vehicle was rolled over and some people were injured. I pray that you would just, uh, Lord, just turn our country to thee. I pray that you would turn Europe back to thee as well, Lord. Work in our midst. Glorify yourself, Lord. We thank you for all the work that went into today's services, from the flowers to the decoration to the audiovisual work, Lord, to the sound work to uh, the music work, Lord, so much. And I'm sure there's other things, Lord, cooking and so forth. And we just pray again that your name would be glorified, Lord. We love you. We pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. Now, Lord willing, we're going to... Here, Good morning, Dr. Don Drake. There we go. I'll shut up now. Here in Facebook land, we're Glad you tuned in to be in our service today, Victory Baptist Church in New Brass, Spain. Today is a bittersweet day. Today will be our last day uh, to bring this service on Facebook, uh, for we'll be leaving uh, next week. So uh, we do ask you to pray for us as we make our transition back to North Carolina and pray uh, for us that God would use us for his honor and glory in military missions. We're going on furlough, and uh, we're looking forward to God's blessings, and we certainly uh, thank God for letting us serve him here uh, in the Marone Air Base area of Spain these three years. And so we trust God will take every witness every track that we've given out and use it for his honor and glory to bring souls to uh, the kingdom of God. And so we do covet your prayers now and as we take our Bibles this morning, we want you to turn with us to 1 Corinthians chapter number 1. 1 Corinthians chapter number 1 in the Bible today. We want to begin reading in verse number 18. 1 Corinthians 1, 18. The Bible says, For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world, by wisdom, knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. For the Jews require sight, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks foolishness. But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God, and the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. Now we'll leave off reading there, and we'll take our text from verse 18. Where the Bible says, For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. I want to preach this morning with the help of God on this thought, this subject. The power of the cross. The power of the cross. Now the Bible states that the preaching of the cross is the power of God. And then we read again there in verse 24 that Christ is the power of God. Now, to the unsaved, uh, the Bible says, to them uh, uh, that perish foolishness. The cross is foolishness 
to the unbeliever, to the one without Christ, they think it's a silly matter. Uh, they think it's something that's absurd. Uh, I mean, the message that Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, died on the cross, and then on the third day he arose victorious uh, over death, hell, and the grave. And all one needs to do, this is all a person has to do, uh, is repent of their sins and by faith accept him, the Lord Jesus, to be saved. Now that message to the lost world uh, seems ridiculous uh, uh, to those that are lost without Christ. Now there's two elements of society that does not want to hear it. The first one is the sensationalist. Uh, this, this, they are represented by the Jews uh, there in verse 22. The Bible says, for the Jews require a sign. Now, the Jews are looking for a sign. They're looking for a secular power. They were looking for the Messiah to come and, and, and relieve them and release them from the power and the oppression of the Romans in their day and set up his kingdom. Therefore, they rejected the lowly Lord Jesus. See, faith is alien to them. It's too simple a matter. It's not enough for them that Jesus died on the cross and by faith they can trust him and be saved. They're concerned about external of religion. They're looking for what they can see and what they can hear and what they can feel. Uh, but they need something uh, uh, drastic uh, to satisfy their craving for sensationalism. They would say, if Christ arose, let him come down from heaven. But you know what Jesus says to that? He says, that is wicked. The Lord Jesus said about the Jews, he said, it, he said a wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. Now, do we still have uh, sensationalists to, with us today? Of course we do. We have a world full of those who are seeking external religion. I mean, they, they, they're governed by sensationalism, the forms of religion, all the beauty and the pomp of religion. They're looking for a sign. They're looking for a feeling. They're looking for something that raises the hair on their flesh. Sensationalism. But also there's a second group, and that's the intellectual, uh, uh, intellectualism. And we see that here with the Greeks in verse 22. For the Jews require sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. Now, intellectualism is represented by the Greeks. Because they're seeking intellect. They're seeking wisdom. The message of the cross is too shallow for them. Can you imagine? It's not reasonable to them that one could be saved by simple faith in Christ of the cross. Ridiculous matter to them. Yet, there is no truth or message that has more death than the cross. It is a mysterious and profound message. Oh, the death of Calvary. Thank God for Calvary love. Thank God for Jesus who went to that cross, uh, bled and died for sinners like you and me. Oh, my friend, I thank God this morning for the message and the power of the cross. Yet the world brands it foolishness. To them that perish, foolishness, the Bible says. But we preach it proudly, regardless. Notice there in verse 23, but we preach Christ 
crucified. Hallelujah. We preach it. We don't whisper it. We're not ashamed of the cross. We're not ashamed of Christ. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God. Amen and amen. We, we love it. We preach it. Uh, it is the power of God. The power of the cross. Now, I hope you know something about the power of the cross today. The power of the cross melts the hard-hearted sinner. Oh, we must get them to the cross. That's their only hope. God's melting and God's way of saving. Notice, first of all, that the cross will melt the hardened sinner when he understands who is dying. Notice in verse 23, it's Christ crucified. Jesus Christ, the anointed Son of God, just to think about this, that God loves unworthy sinners so much that he gave his only begotten Son. Beloved, it makes all the difference. Thousands were crucified on Roman crosses, but only one cross held the Son of God. All others crucified have been long forgotten in time. But hey, the death of Jesus is immortalized. Every time we see a cross, there the Son of God died. Every time we see a cross, it reminds us of the crucifixion of our Lord Jesus Christ, the one who loved us and gave himself for us. Oh, listen. Hey, in that cross we glory, hallelujah. And beloved, when that sinner uh, uh, realizes and understands who is dying, uh, it will melt him. But secondly, uh, when, when he understands how he is dying, not only uh, who is dying, the Lord Jesus, but why uh, and how he is dying, a depictable and detestable agonizing death our Lord died for you and for me one reserved for hardened criminals and, and runaway slaves our Lord bled and died and suffered on that cross shedding his blood for a world of sinners like you and me the pain and the suffering of our Lord are indescribable by the human tongue. We try, but we fail. The pains of his death, all oh, the hurt, the horror, and the hell that Jesus endured on the cross. And let it melts the hard-hearted sinner when he understands how he is dying. And then may I say thirdly that when he understands why he is dying, not only who and how, but why he is dying, it is not merely a public event. It is a personal sacrifice for every sinner. For me, the Bible says, for me he died. When I read, or when I read those graphic verses in Isaiah chapter 53, I am amazed and stirred and even convicted in my heart. Where he says in the Bible, he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, just high but of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Amen. Oh, thank God this morning. For me, he died. For you, my friend, he died on that cross. John Wesley, that great Methodist preacher in days gone by, he wrote in his journal, he had made a visit on the Tyne River, and he said, I have never seen such a wicked place in all my day. Even the little children use the foulest language. But he said he took them to the cross 
and use that tender text in Isaiah 53. He was wounded for our transgressions. And he said, when I was through with my message, he said, people clung to my clothes and to my hands. He had brought them to Calvary and to the Lord Jesus Christ. And their hard hearts was melted. Oh, my friend, today, uh, the power of the cross melts the hearts of hard-hearted sinners. But also, I want to say that the power of the cross moves the hard-hearted sinner, moves him to confession. When I came to the cross, I see the spotless Lamb of God. Amen. There on the cross dying for me. I see all the suffering. I see one who has uh, done no wrong. And I confess. I am a black hearted sinner. Never is my sin so glaring. As I look at the cross. There's no place in history. Where the pride of man. Is made more clear. Than at the cross. Of our Savior. And beloved, there, the hard-hearted sinner is moved to confession and then moved to repentance. Amen. When a man focuses upon the cross of Calvary, upon the Lord Jesus dying in their place, in their stead, it brings them to repentance. They see their sin in a different light. And they, they, they see what their sin uh, did to Jesus. It nailed him to the cross. And they see the results of their sin. James said, when sin is finished, it bringeth forth death. And the love that it, 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 when the sinner sees this, it, it, their sin becomes so repulsive. They see the vileness and the rottenness of, the, of their sin. And they see that, that they're headed toward death. Amen. Oh, but yet, when they see that and they're convicted in their heart, they turn and they flee to God. And, and his sin uh, has turned him off. He sees the depravity of his heart. And his sin is magnified. In its ugliness. There's nothing pretty about sin. There's nothing white about sin. Oh, listen, the Bible says there's pleasure in sin, but watch it. Pleasure in sin for a season. Amen. And beloved, after that season, you become sick and tired of your sin. And you won't help. And you will seek help. And your only help will come from the Lord. Oh, the psalmist said, I'll live by my eyes in the hills, which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. Amen. I always made heaven and earth. But hey, oh, when a, a, the power of the cross moves that hard hearted sinner to confession and to repentance, but also to faith. To faith. It is such a simple thing. Notice in verse 25. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness, notice the weakness of God, is stronger than men. When that poor sinner says, I believe, I believe in Christ, I believe in his death, burial, and his resurrection, I believe he died for my sin. It releases the mighty power of God unto salvation in their life. Simplicity of faith releases the dynamic saving work and grace of Almighty God. Oh, believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Beloved, the power of the cross, notice our text, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness but the ones which are saved, it is the power of God. Amen. Oh, let me say thirdly this morning that the power of the cross makes a new, a 
hard-hearted sinner. Oh, listen. He is cleansed by the blood of Jesus. That crimson stain I see, I plunge, and it cleanses me from all sin. Uh, 1 John 1, 9. Uh, uh, if we confess our sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. First John 1 7, the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. So we see that the power of the cross cleanses the sinner from their sin. And then secondly, it converts the sinner. The power of God converts them Amen. from sinnership to sainthood. Second mm -hmm. Corinthians 5, 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things pass away, behold, all things become new. Amen. Beloved, that divine power, that regenerating power, that changing power, the sinner that trusts Christ makes a 180 degree turn from their sin to the living Christ. Hallelujah. On the road to hell, but now on the king's highway, headed for glory. What a difference salvation makes in the heart of the sinner. Cleanses him, converts him, and then thirdly, he consecrates him. Now, when the repentant and believing soul comes to the cross, Jesus lays it on him. He is now a crucified and consecrated individual. People who've been to the cross, people who have trusted Christ and have been touched by his saving grace and by its power, they want to live a clean life. They want to live a pure life. They want to be holy for God and his glory. And I can say this today, my friend, righteousness doesn't have to be legislated and dictated to one that has trusted Christ as Lord and Savior. Amen. The Holy Spirit lives within the believer, and the Holy Spirit teaches us what direction we should take. He gives us wisdom uh, to walk in this life. Uh, and beloved, uh, <laughs> you never, listen, you never have a revival of true religion until we preach the cross. It alone will change and consecrate people. Now, I'm for biblical standards. You know that. I'm for it. I believe it. And people will never uh, 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 abide until... Uh, They've been to the cross. That person that's trusting Jesus today, uh, they don't have to be, be beaten over the head uh, to live right and do right for God. No! The Holy Spirit in them, them enables them, encourages them. And when they head in the wrong direction, flags of the Holy Spirit goes up in their heart. And they say, wait a minute, this ain't right. Wait a minute. Something's wrong. And look, that's the way it is. It's the power of the cross that's been activated in the life of the one that trusts Christ. Notice to them which uh, believe, uh, uh, to them which are saved, it is the power of God. The cross, there's something marvelously dynamic about it. I believe this song uh, tells it all. At the cross, alas, and did my Savior bleed, and did my sovereign die, would he devote that sacred head for someone such as I? At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart roll away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I'm happy all the day. Was it for crimes which I have done? He suffered on the tree. Amazing pity, grace unknown, and love beyond tree. But dropped a brick and never repay. The debt of love 
my own. Here, Lord, I give myself away. Tis all that I can do. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight. And now I'm happy all the day. J. H. Jowett tells the story of a friend that had a dream. And uh, he said in that dream, it was a rabbit running through a garden. All, you could almost smell the fresh vegetables. But suddenly it heard a cry of hounds. Ears pricked and froze. Then he ran. And the dogs got closer and closer. He could feel the hot breath on his face. On he ran up the mountain. And he turned and looked. And it wasn't hounds. It was his own sin. On he went. And he reached the summit. And he saw a cave and he ran in and turned around. In the opening of the light of the cave, he saw a figure on, of the cross. Stand between him and his sins. And he woke. And God used that dream to bring that man to Christ. That vivid dream of his sins and the cross brought him to the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, if the cross is not preached and you're not brought to it, you don't see it. Your sins, like those hellish towns, will overtake you and desire you. Flee to the cross today. Flee. He wants to save you today, and He can save you today if by faith you will trust Him as your Lord and Savior. Cast self down and cry, hiding in thee, hiding in thee. Thou blessed rock of ages, I'm hiding in thee. Sir, our last message here in you play of Spain, let me make this appeal if I can. The Lord Jesus said to feel is white under harvest, ready to be plucked, ready to be brought in. But he also said, he said, the laborers are few. Now let me ask you today, would you pray about it? And would you consider going into mission? Serving the Lord Jesus somewhere, maybe right there where you live, or maybe somewhere around the world. Would you pray about it? Would you ask the Lord what would He have you to do? People all over this world lost and dying for the hope of the Savior. And beloved, you and I have the message. First Corinthians 1 18. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved that it is the power of God. I'm more convinced today that this is the message that the world needs more than anything. They need to hear about the power of the cross, power of the blood that was shed for them on the cross. <coughs> May you not be faithful. <coughs> in our witnessing to present Christ and his atoning work because that is the saving knowledge that they need in order to be saved. God bless you. We love you. Keep praying for us. And Lord willing, somewhere down the road, we'll meet again. Amen.